Hello people, welcome to Gurukula. I'm Jai. So today in this video, we are going to see about the routing algorithms and then the routing protocols. So without any further delay, let's get into the topic. So whereas in our previous video we might have spoken about what are all the various concepts that is related to routing. So we might have discussed three principles that is um, coming in adherence to the routing concepts. So one is the delivering, the second one is the forwarding and third one is the routing itself. So by the end of discussion we just came to know that when we wanted to create a routing table which is uh, to be implemented on a dynamically varying network, we definitely need few routing algorithms and then the routing protocols. So this video is going to be a continuation video from the previous one. If you have not yet watched the previous video, I will leave you the link in the i button and as well as in the description section. So please do check out the previous video and then you can continue with this. So with this note, let me continue with what exactly the protocol and then what exactly the algorithms are. So before exactly understanding what routing protocol and routing algorithm says, we should have a clear understanding on what exactly algorithm is and what exactly the protocol is. So in order to make it very clear, let me put out this particular statement. So this statement tells us what exactly the protocol is. So what does the statement says? A protocol is a set of rules that determines how the system functions. So keep in mind that protocol is always going to tell you how the system has to function. So in order to uh, keep it in mind, we can also call this as a protocol is something which has to be respected. Okay. So on the other hand, we have algorithm. So let me put up an another statement that will tell you what exactly algorithm is. So this statement says that the algorithm tells that the system what to do. So the algorithm are the various steps which a system will execute. So that is what actually algorithm is an exact thing which says the system what to do in order to achieve a particular task. So algorithm is something which has to be applied and it should be followed. So in bird's eye view, we can say that algorithm is something which has to be applied and which has to be followed for sure. And protocol is something which has to be respected, right? And then in other words, I can also tell you that algorithm is something that tells you what to do. And then protocol is something that will tell you how to do. So even though for few viewers, it might not be very clear so that in our usual way, we will take up an example and then we will try to understand what exactly protocol and then the algorithm is. So in order to make our example more spicier, what I'm going to take is I'm going to take an cooking recipe. So let us try to cook something. So I'm trying to cook something and then the algorithm goes like this. This is what the algorithm says. So in my recipe, the first step which I wanted to perform is I will have to chop the onion. So that is the very first step which I have to perform. And once I'm done with chopping the onion, the second step which I have to follow is I will have to heat up the olive oil in the pan. And then once the oil got heated up, then what I will have to do, the third step is I need to put the onion in the pan. I need to add some salt and I will have to stir until the onion is translucent. So this is how the recipe goes, all right. So this exact step-by-step -step process is what we call it as algorithm. So can you observe that algorithm is telling me what to do, correct? First, I need to chop the onion, then I need to heat up the pan, and then I will have to heat up the olive oil, and then I need to put the onions, and then I have to saute the onions until it becomes translucent. So doesn't it tell me that what I have to do in order to come out with a very good recipe. So that is what algorithm is. And then if this is algorithm, then what exactly protocol means? So protocol is something which has to be respected. So that will tell you or these are all the set of 
uh, instructions you can respect or you which you can follow in order to come out with a very good recipe so the protocol says that you will have to use knife to cut the onion onion can be cut out by using many several maize and you can use any other kitchen gadgets to cut the onion but using a knife will give you freedom and then that will give you a nice shape so that is what the protocol says and then the flame heats you can heat up the pan by using any method but if you use flame it will be quicker the time will be saved and then olive oil is delicious and of course you can use any oil for your recipe but olive oil will give you good taste for your recipe and then frying pans are good for sauteing onions you can put onions on any kind of pan but frying pans are more suitable um, pans to saute the onions so you will have to wash your hands before handling your food you can prepare your food even without washing your hands but but the point of hygiene it is better to wash your hands always in order to keep your food more hygiene so your protocol is something which you will have to respect in order to get the optimum output so that is what we call it as the protocol is so now i think all the viewers might have got what exactly algorithm is and what exactly the protocol is so algorithm is something that is telling you what to do a step by step procedure which you need to follow in order to achieve a particular task and protocol is something that will tell you what how to do each and everything in order to get an optimum result in that particular task whatever you are performing the same thing is going to be applied so when i have an algorithm then definitely i will have an associated protocol with it right so that is what the thing which i am trying to drive from this particular slide so i think or i hope that every one of you might have understood what exactly protocol and then the algorithm is so now we will march forward and then we will try to understand what exactly the routing protocols are why do we need routing protocols because routing is the most important task in the network to forward packets from source to destination so as we discussed in the previous video the previous video will tell you how exactly the packet is being routed from one point to another point or in other words from source to destination so in order to transfer a packet from source to destination all the intermediate nodes we call it as routers who is the responsible for routing the packet to the correct destination requires a routing table so in that routing table you will have the information of the neighboring nodes without which transferring a packet is not possible so how a router will acquire a information about the network or the neighboring nodes at least at the initial stage at the initial stage each and every router must get an information about the neighboring router and later on each and every router must know the complete picture of the entire network so how is it being acquired how is how the router is getting and complete information about the entire network so there comes the routing protocol that will tell you how to acquire the information about the network so before directly jumping into understanding routing protocols we will have to make a little bit of changes in how do we look into the network so the perspective of looking into the network has to be changed a little bit in order to understand the routing protocol and then the routing algorithm so we will have to um, or in other words i can say that the routing process can be well understood if you represent the network as a graph kind of thing so instead of looking into uh, router switches servers all these kinds of thing what you can do is you can put everything as a node so each node on the network may be represent uh, any host or any host on the network or any switch on the network or any device that is connected on the network can be viewed as a node so once it is viewed as node that this is how the image will look like and then so each node will have to be connected to each other by using a link and each and every link will have a metric as depicted over here in the picture so when you look at this particular figure you can see that there is a node called a so when i have a node all the circles in this particular figure represents a node this is what we call it as a node and then each and every node is connected by a line and this line is what we call it as a link which means this node can be of anything it can be a switch it can be a switch or it can be a router 
or it can be a host or it can be any device that is connected on an internet and then you have an another line which is connecting two different nodes and these lines is what we call it as a link and this link is nothing but it can be anything it can be an ethernet cable that is connecting or it can be an wi-fi link that is connecting the nodes or it can be any connection media that is actually establishing the connection between one node and then the another node it can be it is it can be viewed as a medium it can be wired it can be wireless if it is wired it can be ethernet or it can be coaxial or it can be fiber or whatever it is so that is what we call it as a link and then you can see numbers over here so all these numbers that is mentioned in every link represents the metric metric or in other words we call it as cost so generally we will take this cost as the number of hops so what do you mean by the number of hops let's take for an example a is the node which is connected over here and b is the node connected over here and considering the distance between the a and b this might be connected by using several number of intermediate devices and also remember uh, in network there might be multiple number of routes to reach a particular network so here this is what the first route and this is what the second route so if i have taken the first route then i will have to go one two two number of hops this is my first hop this is my second hop so what i will do is i will assign the cost as two if i take this particular network so one and one over here and then this are all the intermediate networks if i have to take the second route then obviously one two three and four so there are four number of hops which i have to perform so this one and four is what we call it as something call it as metric or the cost so we can generally take the number of hops as a cost or you can also take the bandwidth or you can take the delay the cost can be anything but in most uh, general situations we will be using number of hops as a metric over here so this is what the representation of a network what we use in our subsequent classes in order to understand the routing protocols and then the routing algorithms so next coming to the routing protocol classifications routing protocols are classified based on their characteristics so in order to look into the characteristics if i have to classify the routing protocols based on the purpose then i can classify them as interior gateway protocol or exterior gateway protocol in if i have to classify based on their operation their mode of working then i can classify them as three different ways one is distance vector protocol another one is link state protocol or path vector protocol if i have to classify based on the behavior then i can obviously classify them as class full addressing uh, or class less addressing protocols so these are all the various classifications or routing protocol and we will try to put all of these types in one picture and then we will try to get the bird's eye view of classification of routing protocol so this is how the routing protocols are classified so in our previous videos you might have remembered that i might have stated about the static routing protocols but the static routing protocols we will not be used in a wider sense because that is not a suitable uh, routing protocol for dynamically varying environment and especially for the bigger networks kind of internet then the static routing protocols will be will have no use in that so definitely we will be using the dynamic routing protocols which have an ability to update itself or automatically whenever there is a change happening on a network so these are all the various types of routing protocols starting from the dynamic routing protocol it is initially classified into interior gateway protocol and then the exterior gateway protocol and whereas the interior gateway protocols are further classified into distance vector and then the link state and on the other hand the exterior gateways are further classified into path vector routing and each and every algorithm what i do is i will consider this violet color band represents the algorithm so these are all the algorithms and in other words we can call it as routing algorithms and whatever it is mentioned over below this algorithm stage we call it as the protocols so this is going to tell you algorithm is going to tell you what to do and then the protocol is going to tell you how to do 
so that is what we are going to see in the subsequent videos in this particular lecture video series now we will try to understand what exactly this interior gateway protocol and what exactly the exterior gateway protocols are so in order to understand what interior protocol and then what exterior gateway protocol is we need to understand about a concept we call it as autonomous system so what do you mean by autonomous system autonomous system for an example concern what i can consider is so i can take an internet service provider so let me consider this is isp1 so this particular internet service provider this internet service provider can be any network or any domain let us let me take it as jio or airtel or bsnl or whatever it is so if he is an internet service provider jio they will have their own infrastructure their own customers their own billing facilities and their own tariff for using their particular network and similarly we don't have only one internet service provider to connect the entire world we will have different internet service providers and multiple internet service providers so as of example i will consider there are two internet service providers for our example right so each and every internet service provider will be termed as a different autonomous system so jio is a separate autonomous system where they can autonomously operate or they can autonomously change the infrastructure over there so each and every internet service provider we call them as the autonomous system so whenever a packet is being exchanged within this particular internet service provider we call them as intra domain routing so we call them as intra domain routing and similarly whenever the packet is being exchanged or the packet is transferred only within this particular network we again call this as intra domain routing and this intra domain routing is also called as interior gateway protocols or algorithms all right so interior gateway protocols or intra domain routing or intra domain protocols are one and the same which will allow the packets to get exchanged only within the autonomous systems so the, but this is not the uh, criteria which we need in order to satisfy the internet criteria each and every node on a network should be able to connect to multiple nodes on the another network as well so in order to do that we will have to exchange packets from one node to another node so how do we do that so if my packets is getting exchanged from one isp to another isp or if i could able to exchange my packets from one uh, autonomous system to another autonomous system then that type of routing is what we call it as inter domain routing so this is what we call it as inter domain routing so inter domain routing is nothing but where the packets are being exchanged or the packets are being routed within two autonomous systems so if the routing is happening only within the autonomous system then we call it as intra domain routing or interior gateway protocol and if the routing is happening among the autonomous systems between two autonomous systems then that is what we call it as inter domain routing or in other words it is also called as exterior gateway protocol so exterior gateway protocols so obviously this particular thing we have so if, if we discuss interior gateway protocol interior gateway mechanisms will have different algorithms and then if i have an algorithm then obviously i will have different protocols associated with it so when we talk about the algorithms that is uh, corresponding to interior gateway protocols we have distance vector algorithm so distance vector algorithm and then we have link state algorithm so these two algorithms are corresponding to interior gateway protocol 
and then if we have an algorithm there must be an associated protocol with it so here in our lecture video series is concerned we are going to discuss about the distance vector algorithm and the associated protocol is routing information protocol which is abbreviated as RIP so RIP stands for routing information protocol and for the link state algorithm we will be discussing in another type of protocol which is what we call it as OSPF open shortest path first so OSPF is abbreviated as open shortest path first and that is the protocol which is associated with the link state algorithm and when coming to exterior gateway protocols so we have to discuss one algorithm so that is what we call it as path vector algorithm so path vector algorithm is what we are going to discuss and this path vector algorithm really has a capability to route the packets from one autonomous system to another autonomous system so that is what we call it as path vector algorithm so if i have an algorithm then definitely there must be a protocol associated with it and protocol that we are going to discuss in association with uh, path vector algorithm is border gateway protocol we call it as bgp so bgp is abbreviated as border gateway protocol so i think this particular figure and whatever we have written over here will give you an bird's eye view of how exactly the routing protocols and algorithms are being classified now when we get back to our previous slide i think that will give you a better understanding so now you can understand this very clearly correct so we have dynamic routing protocols now we know what interior gateway protocols are interior gateway protocols are nothing but we can able to route the packets only within the autonomous system i will call it as as and then exterior gateway protocol we can able to route the packets among the uh, uh, around different routing uh, sorry autonomous systems so we have autonomous system one we have autonomous system two and if i could able to transfer the packets or route the packets from one autonomous system to another autonomous system and that is what we call it as exterior gateway protocols so if I need to exchange the packets both requires different mechanisms so I have different algorithms and then different protocols associated with it and the algorithm associated with interior gateway protocols are distance vector and link state and for distance vector we are going to discuss about RIP and for link state algorithm we are going to discuss about OSPF and for the path vector routing we are going to discuss the border gateway protocol. So in our next subsequent videos we are going to discuss about each and every algorithm and the protocols corresponding to it so i think this makes sense with you and i'm completing the video over here we have came to an end of this particular video and i'm going to meet you all in the next video until then it's bye from jay and then happy learning